Hello, I am Tracy Hitchings. My guest is Dave Stafford, ambient guitarist and so much more. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to you, wherever you are listening across the globe. I'm transmitting from the Gold Coast in Queensland, Australia, and you've tuned into Tracy's Prog World. So Dave, you're a guitar craft veteran, recording artists, with over 40 releases since 1972 and the founder of ambient micro label.com i might add that to that so um dave how is it going by the way are you good there it's going great oh, Thanks, okay. Tracy. <laughs> that's great and uh so anyway you've just about zoomed on board now i know we were having a couple of techies as as always with yeah. zoom seems to be the way <laughs> Technology is here to help us when it wants to. It, it is indeed, isn't it? Just let us know where you've zoomed in from, darling. Oh, I'm calling, sorry, I'm, I'm in central Scotland in a suburb of the town of Stirling, the city of Stirling. Yeah, and I do detect a very American accent there. So where's that one from? Right, yeah, it's born in <laughs> San Diego, California, and I live most of my life in San Diego, California, and it's only more recently that I decided I would move to Scotland. And so how long have you been in Scotland then, if I may ask? Since 2005, so 15 years. And how's Scotland treating you? Oh, Scotland is home. I mean, I love the people. I love the scenery. I love the weather, which people think is crazy. But I just love this place. It's, it's heaven on earth to me. And I yeah. wouldn't change it for the world. That's good. Oh, good for you. I love Scotland. Scotland's, Scotland holds something very special for me. And uh, I don't know, I can't explain what it is because I'm actually Cornish, which is the other end of uh, England. Right, the complete opposite, yeah. It, it is indeed, uh, but there's just something and about Scotland. Very, very, very beautiful country. There. Yeah, yeah, and something about the that's Scottish people. Place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love them very much. I love the accent. So, yeah, yeah. So, so there you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, so Dave, you're, you're a guitar craft veteran. And um, so your work with acoustic and electric guitars, guitar synthesizers, bass guitar, complete nine um, ultimate, including guitar rig pro, software synthesizers, including the M-Tron Pro, Mellotron and True Piano. <laughs> Am I yep. getting there? All of the above, all of the above and four. And, and, is it, four. and is it right that you, um, also the, the K oscillator, xy pad right. synthesizers and many yes. many 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 music applications as i understand and yes. and any number and other instruments instruments sorry real or virtual have i got that correct because this is what i've been reading you about do. you and i'm quite fascinated well, basic, yes i've worked with yeah. real instruments since i was about four years old and i started playing my mother's piano and then since then, I've also begun to do a lot of work yeah. with applications-based music, where you use an app to create a particular sound. Right. That's okay. great. Cool. Just a lot. Okay. Really. So um, again, clearly a multi-instrumentalist, and um, but it's the looping, yeah. the ambient looping, if you like, or the ambient playing and using looping. So anyway, yeah. I guess so tell us about a bit about the, uh, the looping then. Looping is an art form. It's something that a lot of people do. There's uh, some great websites and blogs and there's tons of information if you just go and search guitar looping. Um, my own personal journey for looping really began with Robert Fripp. I went to see him play his guitar in a tower record store of all places. Right. And uh, he used two tape recorders and created a six second delay that allowed him to loop 30 or 40 or 50 guitars and then play solos on top of them. And that just changed my life. I walked out of that store and I said, you know what? I am gonna be a looper when I grow up. <laughs> Not loopy, but a looper. Okay. <laughs> no, that's what I did. That's exactly what I've done. I became an ambient loop guitarist. Yeah. And most of my records are indeed loops. Now there are a couple of exceptions to that. In 2012, I made a CD called Gone Native that is like regular rock music. Right. Because I love Prague and it has some Prague songs on it that you might like, Tracy. I know you're big into Prague, so, yeah. you know. 
Like so certainly I, have I been. just play ambient music, but it is, it does make up probably 90 to 95% of what I have been working on, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and, and, and I have been in there looking around and you've got a lot of stuff there actually. So people can, yeah. really, people can really explore uh, what you've got well, there. Well, so. yeah. the, the quick way to look me up is to just go to davestafford.bandcamp.com. And you can listen to your heart's content. You don't have to buy anything. If you want to download something, you're welcome to. Mm -hmm. There's prog, there's ambient, there's applications, music, there's everything imaginable there. Mm -hmm. Basically, my life's work is sitting up on Bandcamp. And mm -hmm. it was a labor of love to put it up there, but I did it. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so, obviously, you it's I understand that you actually worked in a, a guitar um, workshop with Robert Fripp. That, uh, um, so yeah. And I'm a member of what's loosely known as guitar craft, or more recently, guitar circles. Courses were designed to help people develop a new vocabulary using Robert Fripp's new standard tuning for guitar, which mm -hmm. is called NST, New Standard Tuning, which makes sense. And uh, basically just helping people to come to grips with this rather difficult to play instrument. It, it looks beautiful, but it's not that easy <laughs> to do. Yeah. Uh, I was lucky enough in 1988 to answer an ad and send in a, I had to send and submit a letter saying, dear Mr. Fripp, this is why I'd like to join. I'm badly self-taught. I don't know what I'm doing. I need your help. Help, please. <laughs> and then they, they accepted me. I bought a guitar, a special ovation guitar that we used. And the rest is history. You know, it yeah. was just a fantastic experience being on those courses over the years. Wonderful. And um, the guitar you're holding now, which, what guitar is that? This is actually a limited edition Frank Zappa model. It's based Ooh. on the guitar played at the uh, Roxy Theater in Los Angeles in 1973. And it has these two switches here, which put the pickups out or in phase, which allows you to get very thin Stratocaster-like sounds out of a guitar that's normally very meaty and beefy and sort of heavy. I can just flick a switch and have a very thin and reedy and wonderful Fender-like sound. It's really wow. fantastic. It's probably the nicest looks guitar awesome. I've ever owned. And I, I just love it. Mm, it looks awesome. It really does. Um, so that's beauty. great. So we're talking about uh, Robert Fripp that's married to Toya Wilcox, of course, aren't we? Yes, so, of course, um, Toya. Did you get to meet Toya at all as well? No, I never, I never did meet Toya. My partner in the band, the Dozy Lumps, he met Toya. He was on a course with Toya when Robert and Toya were first married. Yeah. She went with him and then she decided she didn't really, guitar craft wasn't for Toya. So no. she only one or two courses and then she said, now you do that, Robert, and I'll, I'll go on holiday and do something else, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they have separate holidays now. Robert holidays <laughs> in guitar craft. And Toya does sing Smoke on the Water. I don't know what she does, you know. <laughs> oh, th but they're an amazing couple. I, I see them so much. I'm using social oh, media. God, yeah. 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 And, um, couple. She, couple. Absolutely. They're very conscious people, spiritual people. That's what I, that's what I get from them. And they're really there, um, really entertaining and really yeah. kind of very conscious about what they're doing as well. And just look, they come across as beautiful souls to me. And yes, people... I, I'm, 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 more. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely. Really agree yeah, they're, they're remarkable people, both of them. Yeah. So, you, w with Robert Fripp teaching you, what was that actual experience like? Well, I said to Robert, he he said, "Play something for me." So I played guitar for a minute, and he looked at me and he said, "Dave, the whole problem with your playing is your face." <laughs> I sat there, I thought. Okay, that's not what I expected him to say. No. But that, what do you mean? And he said, well, I wouldn't normally recommend this, but you need to practice in front of a mirror. And for some reason, when you play the guitar, you make a face like a, a rock guitarist face, you know? I don't know if you know the kind of heavy metal, yeah. Yeah. you know, and you yeah. grit your and teeth, and you're, so, you get all this tension in your body, and you can't yeah. relax, and you can't play. So it prevents you from playing well. Yeah, yeah. So you're putting that that kind of aggression into the sound, maybe instead of the yeah. instead, maybe the emotional not, content that it could be a lot of aggression. But it's not really the right thing to do. The right thing to do is to be relaxed and yeah. let the music just flow through you. Yeah, yeah. And that's what he taught me how to do, and I I can't thank him enough. I mean, uh, he was just a remarkable teacher, and you know he's retired now. He just hangs yeah. out and plays guitar with Toya, which is yeah. beautiful. 
Yeah. And other than that, I just feel so fortunate to have been a part of it. Guitar craft is an amazing thing. That's fantastic. Well, that's just great to hear. Because, uh, yeah, again, like I say, I just uh, really look up to two people like that, like that couple. Yeah. They are just, oh, yeah. they are tremendous people. So that's just great to hear. So, um, yeah, um, you, you've recorded a number of CDs, but yes, having, have. yeah, but having recent times adopted a download only strategy. So what right. brought you to that? Is it the sign of the times of which we're in or just how you're comfortable? I think it's a combination of those two things and, and other factors. But the main feeling I get is in 2012, I did the exercise where I, I made a new album called Gone Native and I had it pressed up at a proper CD factory and did it all, you know, by the book. And then I was able to sell those CDs at shows or by mail order or whatever. Yeah. But I found for the bulk of my catalog, since I have so many songs and so many albums, and you said over 40, it's probably more like 60. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I haven't counted for a couple of days. And they seem to just grow organically, you know. Yeah. The last thing I did was from January of this year. I've not really done a lot of recording because I've been working on my guitar systems and trying to make things sound even better than they already do. But um, it's just one of those things that I think it's easier for everybody. They can yeah. go to band camp, they can listen to the song. Do they yeah. like the song? Yeah. If they like it a lot, they can download it. If they yeah. don't like it, get to the next song and the next song until they find one that they do like. Yeah. And I think that's a great way to shop for music is to be able to hear it and think, Wow, do I like that? Oh, I really like that. I think I'll download that track. Mm. So they're not committed until they're ready. They're not committed until they hear something. They think, oh, I really like that style. So I'm going to go in with that one. Yeah. I mean, I think I have a limited number of pieces that I worked on as progressive rock, for example. Mm -hmm. So I grouped that together into an album called Progressive Music. Yeah. And so if you go to my site looking to hear my prog stuff, yeah, I have, you can yeah. listen to and if you really fall in love with one of the songs, just recently a friend of mine, a guy that I've known for, oh, about a decade or so, just bought one of my tracks out of the blue. And I'm like, Elliot, what do you, why did you buy that track? And he said, I just love it. I really wanted to have it on my device. So, <laughs> yeah. Wh which one was you know, it? Oh, the song I think is called The Complete Unknown. Is that the one with the, you've got a little, is that the one, because there's obviously the, some similar titles. Is that the one that starts out slowly, very, very, very slow? It starts with keyboards, and then you get guitars and drums coming in. I, I, I oh, have no, 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 no. It's, it's a similar title to the one that I was listening to on the prog section. And I've listened to the other yeah. sections as well that I could find. And, uh, yes, yeah. they're fantastic. So that's why. There's that's... a lot of records up there. I've made an awful lot of records in my short lifetime. Yeah, yeah. I feel very, very, very happy that I've been able to do that. Fantastic. Well, the music, it's, it comes from the heart, doesn't it? So it, just, it feeds the body, it feeds the Music comes from elsewhere. It comes from above. And yeah. I, you know, I'm a religious yes. person, you have to be ready to give voice to music. Yeah. And this is one of the things that Robert Fripp taught me. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I'm really fortunate that I had the right teacher and the right circumstances and the kind of patience and tenacity and perseverance to make it all happen. Mm. So it's like for you, it's that um, it's a spiritual connection that comes through the heart then, isn't it, really? It, and, it and then therefore it just comes out through us and uh and that's yeah. beautiful that's perfect it's all perfect as, oh. as long as it feels good it's perfect and wonderful yeah. great yeah so i'm curious about your um disturbing trends in music let's hear about well, that i read well, that, that somewhere is, <laughs> that's a theory of mine that i think a lot of other musicians might sympathize with and what it boils down to is this I've been playing the piano since I was four and the guitar since I was 13 or nine, depending on how you look at it. I, I say 13 and that's about 50 years now, roughly, almost 50 years, not quite. And that means that I have to, in order to make music, I have to pick up my guitar and record it and play notes with my fingers and actually create the music using the traditional method that guitarists have used for hundreds of years. Yes. You know, we started out with the lute and then there was the guitar and, and eventually electric guitar. Mm -hmm. And I'm at the end of that cycle, but I'm still doing the same things that that lute player would have done 400 years ago. The lute, I'm yeah, putting yeah. the paper, I'm writing, I'm composing. 
I'm using notes to create feeling and atmosphere. So yeah, the trend that bothers me is the fact that nowadays you can get applications or software or other tools that will allow you to sound like you are actually recording guitar, but you're not. You're just tapping on a keyboard saying, play this bit of music, play this bit of music. And some of these people go on to be quite famous and they make a lot of money. Yeah. And I, I struggled to make money and struggled to be a working musician. I've always had a day job. I work in IT in my spare time. Right. So I had to have a day job to pay the mortgage and the bills yeah. so that I was able to indulge my guitar playing side. Yes, yeah. Your so creative that's how that side. Yeah. yeah, and I think that works the same for a lot of musicians and artists. Uh, they have their art and then they have to go to work to pay for that art. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Robert Fripp, Robert Fripp said something really interesting, which is, we pay for the right to play. <laughs> very well I put. Think, I, I, yeah, yeah it's really I that. a good piece of advice and very true. You have to pay if you want to play your guitar or if you want yes. to paint or whatever. You know, there's a price for everything is, I guess, what that boils down mm. to. So this next question I'm curious about to ask you, because obviously you've got into very ambient playing. It's, I've, I've read about you saying, you know, one note is better than a hundred notes. You just, you discover that as you mature in with music, don't you? And yeah, um, I think so. I, over the past decade or so, I've realized the power of the single note. Mm. In fact, I did a a few months ago where I picked out three very famous progressive rock songs, one by Genesis, uh, one by Camel and another right. one by group who I can't remember, but they would all be familiar to you because you yes. know you you are the frog. My world. So <laughs> and I had portions where the guitarist in that band would just play one note. So instead of playing a big fancy solo, he would literally just sit there and play. play one note and it took the place of maybe hundreds of notes that he would do in another section of a song yeah. or he would do the same song and that moment in the song just pretty much stopped me stopped my heart i mean it's just mm -hmm. absolutely a stunning and surprising thing to do what kind of guitarist who can play a thousand notes a minute would choose to just play one note mm -hmm. i think that's mm -hmm. fantastic i yeah. admire it i yeah. envy it yeah. And I tried to emulate it in some of my playing and in some of my recording, but it's a tough thing to do. And it's mm. a, it, again, you, you hit the right word there when you said maturity. It's a musical maturity issue. Mm -hmm. When you reach a certain age and you've been playing for a certain amount of time, you realize, hey, I can't be the hero all the time. I can't come in and play the bombastic, amazing guitar solo that's going to blow everybody away. And they're going to say, oh, that Dave Stafford, he's so fast. He can play, you know, a... Uh, a mixolydian scale at 100 miles an hour i just that's not me anymore you know it, it probably was when i was young but now yeah. i try to play in a more considered way yeah it's funny because what you're saying now takes me right back to the uh, first time and only time actually i, I made it to nebworth and i was oh, yeah. experience i was experiencing pink floyd and when you oh, talk about that one note moment but the depth and the sound of the guitar and yeah. oh, the pure, um, oh, it was something off Dark Side of the Moon. I can't think in this moment, but um, I was, it just pinned my ears back. It, it doesn't yeah. have to all be a thousand miles an hour. It could be no. deeply emotional moments. And I think that's what drew me to prog because you do have, or progressive rock, yeah. call it what you like, I don't really care. But um, that's what drew me to it because it had everything. It has everything. If, you, if you're in that what band, you know, that sort of band that really <laughs> will. Pink Floyd has an amazing sense of dynamics. Oh, wow. So able to yeah. use quiet sections and sections with very few notes mm. and then gradually move to more activity. If you think about a song like Shine On, You Crazy Diamond. Yeah, and that's probably it, actually. <laughs> that might be what it was. I yeah, don't know. Yeah. They, they did play that a lot. lot. But yeah. that's, a, that's an amazing piece to me because it starts out with such simple guitar lines. Just a few notes, beautifully played very tasteful david gilmore mm. is a is a mature artist oh. now oh i love and him he, mm. and, and there are other moments in the song where he's playing pretty fast and it's like a regular rock song or mm. prog rock song but 
for me, it's those quiet moments that I crave that I find, oh, well, I've got to hear part two again because it's the quiet part or whatever. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly yeah. Yeah, um, yeah abs absolutely. Which takes me to, to uh, the, one of the questions I really want to ask you. What about new metal and female front of prog metal bands? Because we're going to the opposite end again in, in a way, aren't we? Right. Well, that's a very different, different question and a great question. Thanks for asking me. I have recently really got into new metal and I've been tracking down all of the albums by two artists in particular. One of them is a woman called Maria Brink. Right. And her band is called In This Moment. And I went and saw them last year at the SECC in Glasgow. And they blew my mind. They were so powerful and so amazing. And then more recently, I've been getting into the music of a woman called Lauren Tate. And her band is called Hands Off Gretel, which is right. a kind of wow. a strange band name. I don't know where that came from. So I bought a few of her CDs as well. And my poor cat my cat doesn't approve of loud music oh. and she really doesn't like loud metal oh. but she's having to live with it because she lives with me i take care of her you know i'm the dad <laughs> she's like oh no not more in this moment dad please you know it's really oh. funny poor puskins <laughs> she does approve she does Pardon disapprove me? it's because she likes to sleep yeah, of course. So, uh, and the little little things, and uh, she's probably yeah. getting a bit familiar with it, but prefers the more soft oh, yeah. and gentle approach, I would she say. Likes <laughs> she likes music. She does yeah. not like metal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Everyone has their own opinion. You know, that's cool. Mm. Yeah, and you know, I understand also something something quirky that uh, you were working on restorations of cassettes. Yes, I do that. I have, I, you know, before you could do CDRs at home, you know, when they came out with CDR burning ability, all I had was cassettes and I made hundreds of cassettes. I also was very into what we call tape trading. So if I got a great camel concert, I would send it to my friend in Michigan and he would send me back an amazing Yes concert. And then I would send that to another friend and he would send me back an amazing Genesis concert. And pretty soon you end up with this library of tapes. I've got boxes full of cassette tapes. Of oh, course. Most contain a lot of really rare and beautiful live performances by the bands that you and I love. Right, yes. You know, as well as people like Frank Zappa, you know, which is a, he, Frank Amazing. Zappa is a huge on me personally. Oh, wow. And yeah, yeah. In terms of rip and all of that stuff. It's all out there. It's yeah. all been recorded by people with little tape machines at concerts. Yeah. And then eventually, it up in in my music collection and i feel so fortunate to have this gigantic collection of live material it's fantastic that is amazing so you've got something probably still that people have never heard perhaps so it's just a gone moment that's, or a lost yeah. they're lost yeah there's no tracks anymore so that's something very rare no. yeah it so a bit rare. are they all being restored then what you have are they all being restored well, I don't think it's, I mean, it's a job that I might finish if I live to be 150, yeah, but I don't yeah. think I live. I've got, I reckon I've got 30 more years of activity to do. And during that time, I will restore more of them. But yeah, yeah. there's no end in sight to the amount yes. of cassettes that I yeah. have working somewhere. Yeah. Some of them are t uh, rubber banded together with a note that says, unknown, no idea what's on these. Yeah. And the only way to find out is to put them in the machine and play them and see what's there. Maybe right. nothing. Yeah. Maybe a bad rehearsal or some bad version of one of my albums or something. Or mm. it might be the most amazing thing you ever heard. There's oh, no wow. way to know it. How it's exciting. That's, that's almost like when you've got when you find that time, it's almost like I'm doing Christmas presents, isn't it? You don't know what's yeah, gonna be inside. <laughs> you don't have any idea. Yeah. You just put it and find out. Yeah. So tell me. So Dave, tell me about your big moment, an aha moment in your music life. I mean, you know, can you share a time on your journey where you experienced um, something that, you know, you may have been experienced hardship and everything like that, but you had a, this aha moment. What is your aha moment, Dave? Well, uh, there's a sort of a complex answer to that. It's a really good question, and thank you for asking it. You mentioned hardship, and I've had some hardships with my own health, which I've been dealing with, and I'm, I'm in good shape now. I'm very healthy now. I'm eating well and sleeping and doing all the right things now. So setting those aside, 
also the two opportunities I had, one in 2009 and the other in 2015, to get on stage with Robert Fripp and play music live for a real audience that paid to come in and see us play, those two moments were so amazing, they went beyond an aha moment. They, they were just a moment of pure joy. So how but, did that come about? How did that, how, well, how did that aha moment lead up to that point, I, Dave? I, the way it worked was this. I had this opportunity to work with Robert Fripp in 1988, starting out at my very first course, which you call your level one. You're a level one guitarist. It's your level one course. It's the beginning. And this was held in Malibu, California, up on a hillside overlooking the ocean. Just a beautiful spot. Mm. And one morning I came out and I saw Robert Fripp standing in front of a bush looking into the bush. And so I walked up to him and I said, hi, Robert, good morning. And he said, good morning. I said, what are you looking at? And he said, it's a snake. <laughs> and so I looked and sure enough, there was a beautiful California grass snake. It's a harmless snake, not a poisonous snake. And he said, beautiful creatures. And then he just sort of wandered away. And I was just like, he's right. They are beautiful. And that was a beautiful moment. So somehow that moment transported me into the future in in a lot of different ways. For example, as part of Guitar Craft, which involved Robert, I ended up playing in Argentina, playing in Spain, playing in Holland. It really opened up a whole, literally the whole world to me in terms of I can just take my guitar and a little suitcase with a change of clothes and go out and play. And so that's how, all I ever wanted to do. How you know? did that come about then? How did it come about that you heard that oh okay yeah I, I went into a store i'd never been into before and i picked up a free newspaper that i'd never seen before and i opened the paper and it said robert fripp will be giving guitar lessons or teaching guitar technique in malibu in a few months time if you're interested send a letter to mr fripp telling him about yourself about your playing and why you need his help yeah yeah so i did that and then they come back to you and they say, yes, you've been accepted for the course. Yeah. This is the fee. You pay the fee. They ask you to buy and bring a guitar, which I did. And then the rest was just history. It all happened yeah. from then on. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you for that answer. So, Dave, so what was that special moment? How did it, how did it come about? For me, that moment was when I was on a course in Barcelona, Spain with Robert and about 42 other guitarists. And we were sat at lunch and at lunch times and dinner times and not so much at breakfast, but at meal times, Robert would tend to talk to us in a sort of informal way. And Robert looked at me and he pointed at me and he said, now Dave, Dave has persevered. And that's why Dave is here because he's never given up he continues to play. He pointed out my guitar case, and there's an autographed sticker for guitar craft that he autographed 30 years previously when I went to see him in the League of Guitarists, who I wasn't good enough to be in at the time, playing at the Roxy or the Whiskey or someplace like that in L.A. Wow. And uh, he said, Dave has persisted. And those three words, Dave has persisted, really drew me right through all of those moments you know all the moments that you wish for that you hope for mm. that are your aha i can do this i can play the guitar with robert fripp that's why you're going to be playing with me dave because you have persisted so in other words you're playing live dave with robert fripp basically yes and that oh was my an gosh. amazing experience you know only a handful of people get to do that the members of king crimson obviously got to do that but I got to do it too, and it was just such an amazing bit of good fortune. Wow. I'm, I'm forever grateful that I had that opportunity. It was remarkable. That is an aha moment. Oh, it's it's an aha lifetime. To your tenacity, <laughs> to, to everything. The, the perseverance yeah. are very important, and you really do need, if you decide you're going to do something, you just need to stick with it. That's wow. what my parents taught me that, and wow. I owe them a debt for that, you know. Yeah. Stick with it, Dave. Do not give up. Yes, yeah. So, so that's the way to be. Yeah, indeed. Now, you did talk earlier, if you don't mind me asking, that you have obviously had some um, illness issues in your past. And would you yeah. want to just share with people what you've um, 
uh, overcome or, or that you've got to a point of where you can deal with it, whatever it is yeah, for you? Yeah, I'm happy to talk about that a little bit. That's not something I like to dwell on because it's an ongoing not at all. process. Not at but all. basically, I have a condition called diabetic neuropathy, and that's because I had diabetes all my life, and I didn't realize it until I was 47 years old. Okay. Then I found out, and then they put you onto all of these medications to try to control your blood sugar. Mm. And it's taken me a long, long time to get my blood sugar under control, which it is now. Right. Yeah. And I'm relatively healthy, so you know it could be a lot worse. I don't have yeah. cancer. I don't have any any serious life-threatening illness, but I do have to be careful what I eat. I I'm a vegan now, which was one of the things I did to trying to improve my situation. I've also lost a lot of weight. I got yeah. really heavy for a while. Yeah. When I was 50, I probably weighed 100 pounds or more than I do now. Yeah. So I've lost weight, I've become a vegan, and I monitor and I take medications for diabetes. Yeah. But other than that, I'm, I'm able to work, you know, it's yes. no problem. Yes. So I, again, with as vegans, as I've um, understood, because I've spoken with a lot of people that, that are into veganism, and yeah. um, despite what um, I said in the other food industries, it's a, a right. very safe thing to do when you know how it to is. find your proteins. It's yeah. perfectly safe. No, um, yeah. There's yeah. no danger to it. Uh, yeah. I think yeah. that there are militant vegans that have maybe stirred up certain people yes. who then try to make it look like it's vegan food is bad or boring yeah. or something yeah. Yeah. food is delicious i eat better now i mean oh my god yeah. you would not believe the lovely things i've had to eat just this past week yeah. i feel so fortunate to have this diet which is healthy it's positive yeah. it's forward thinking and yeah. you know it shows on your I skin, would... actually, it sh Dave. It shows on your skin because you've got that translucent oh. skin that I see yeah. vegans that know what they're doing. And there's a very famous guy that's a vocal coach out there called Roger Love. And he's a teacher to all the people that are over. He's in California. And he's, he's to right. the music industry, to the film industry, like he would um, yeah. be doing Reese Weatherspoon, for example, before she did one of her films when she was yeah. singing. And he's a vegan, and um, you know, and when you when you're a teacher of singing, you know about the health of the body, you know about the health and what is yeah. good. I've never seen a man that more also fit and fantastic skin and alive, and you know, and they don't eat meat. Well, so, not, yeah. Well, I'm not going to tell your boyfriend. I'm going to make you. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, so, that's good, isn't it? And I understand that you're, you know, you, you, you obviously it, it comes quite obviously with what you already said, I suppose. But I understand that meditation is important to you. Getting the right yeah. hours of sleep, obviously controls good health. I've recently begun to meditate. It, it's a new thing for me, so I'm learning as with everything else. But I do find that it, it really helps to ground you if you concentrate on your breathing, you know, and if you start feeling stressed out or unhappy or worried or, you know, anything like that, if you just stop and sit down, put your feet on the floor and concentrate on your breathing for 10 minutes, you'd be amazed at what a difference mm -hmm. it can make the way you feel. It really can. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a great healer meditation. And I, I recommend it highly to anyone that mm -hmm. has stress or feels stressed out. Give it a try. You'd be surprised. It will really help you. Well, I, th I, I don't think I, you seem very relaxed to me. Yeah, you know? I, I agree with you so much. And I, you know, I've taken on to meditation years ago. I, I can get a little sporadic, but I notice a difference when I'm doing it every day. Yeah, you know, it does. Uh, oh boy, what a difference it makes to your clarity of mind. Um, sure, all of those. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And you know, even if you just did twenty minutes a day, if you haven't got time to do more. They say, yeah. they, they, they say, oh, well, I've read that there's lots of sayings, of course, but one of the ones I've traveled across, they say, do the time of your age. So uh, I won't say how old I am, but let's pretend I'm 21. Therefore, do 21 minutes. Okay. There you <laughs> go. <That's perfect. laughs> Almost gave it away, didn't I? I'm sure people know. Almost. But yeah, incredible. So um, okay. um, that's I'd that's like great. to ask you something. Now, I know we're not um, in Christmas yet. I know that. But however, right. people do love uplift, up, uplifting messages. And, you know, the Christmas decorations have already gone up out here. And I think, oh, that's crazy. But yeah. 
snack sort of commercial world. So I'm not trying to be earlier and earlier every year. It is, isn't it? And again, I'm not trying to be commercial, but I do think it's lovely to give people uplifting messages because it is coming on. People are starting to go shopping mums and things that have got busy lives. And so for anybody listening in, what sort of Christmas message would you like to give to your fans or anybody new that's uh, listening to Dave at the moment? Well, that's new. That's a really good question. It's a new question to me, and it's something I've never thought about. So <laughs> you're going to get a, a unique answer that will, excellent. I don't know if it will resonate with anyone or not, but all I can say is that if I hark back to what we talked about a minute ago about my aha moments, that the one thing that I have to say that has probably been of the most benefit to me, and which has also made it possible for me to take my music and share it with you and all of the people that listen to my music yeah is that i persisted dave yeah. has persisted yeah and that i just try to take that with me everywhere because if i get frustrated or i have trouble getting something done or i can't make my wi-fi work like right now i just persist and for example with that it took me two weeks to get through to my wi-fi company and I now have an appointment for 5 p.m. on Thursday. They're going to come and fix my modem. Yay. So that's your early so, Christmas present. <laughs> that's my Christmas present to myself. I'm going to be back on the Internet. So <laughs> I'm able to get on the Internet, obviously, right now with you via my tablet. But I can't, you know, my PC, my TV, all my other stuff won't hook up to the network right now. So yeah. I sorted that out just by doing my aha thing, which is Dave persists. Dave yeah. persists. So that's, that's all your, it is. That's your Christmas message. And what would you say uh, that might be Christmassy as well? Well, I mean, the thing about Christmas is that it's it's a, a Christian based holiday. Yes. There are other faiths, obviously, from Absolutely. Judaism right on up to Buddhism and so on. I I am not a religious person per se, but what I would say is be with your family, eat together, sleep together love each other and just you know be good to each other yeah. life is too short to fight or argue mm. or yes. you know be jealous yes. or envy or any of those things just love each other and be with each other yeah. and so dave as you say you're that, i mean that's a beautiful message and thank you for sharing that message oh, very- with with myself and everybody out there listening and a curiosity though so you're, you're not a religious man but would you say and i would de- i would decipher from what you have been talking about that even uh-huh. though you may not be a religious man i take it that right. you're spiritually a, a spiritually conscious man and that you believe try- in yeah. universal, okay. the universal belief of love and the whole obvious thing that we all need to be doing, yeah. Well, and the thing is, there are practical things that you can do to be more spiritual. And I never really realized this until I reached a certain age. And one of those things is very simple, and that is become a vegetarian or a vegan. Because I don't know if you're aware of this. I mean, you probably are. When you eat food like meat or eggs or milk, dairy food or meat products, animals are being harmed. Mm, That means cows die, cows suffer, chickens are in horrible battery hens, you know, it's just a horrific thing. Mm. So if you change your diet to a healthy one that will make you live longer and have a better life, you will also be helping the planet and helping save the lives of animals. And if you think about animals, I think the thing to say about animals is, they just want to live just like we do. Yeah. They just want to have a good life, mm. be happy, roam free, fly around, whatever it is. And we can help them do that by becoming vegans. Yeah. I know, I know and I'm not, you know what I mean. Yes, this is fascinating, actually, because I watched the David Attenborough film recently that he's sharing with us all about, you know, uh, just about the subject, that actually, that we don't yeah. need to be doing this in the way that we're doing it. In fact, we yeah. need to be eating more plant life. And, uh, and I, you know, for anybody out there, I'm trying to remember the name of it at the moment. Um, I don't remember. Uh, I, I'm an advert for it. I know exactly what yeah, you're talking about. But it, David it's, Attenborough. Yeah, David Attenborough, he did it with the Royal Family Children, this film. And uh, uh, yes, it, it, it's, it's fascinating. Yeah. Pardon? He, he is an amazing guy. Yeah, absolutely. There's great stuff out there. There's Woody Harlston that's got, I think, a film called Kiss the Ground. It's um, 
and um there's a lot of you know like uh, there's yeah. there's stuff out there about you know how to be careful with social media and all like that um the oh gosh what was it called the the, the social media dilemma perhaps um I have to check that out but uh, there's uh, so many great things out there to help us to become more consciously aware and uh, yeah. i mean we're all conscious spiritual beings it's just it's just awakening to it all isn't it that's that's uh yeah it just adds up to you becoming a bit more spiritual a bit more aware of the plight of animals yeah, and the yeah. plight of humans too yeah, humans. Yeah. now we still have slavery we have all of these problems that mm. need to be solved yeah you know there's a lot of us on this planet we need to be able to share it and help each other rather than fight yes yes well that's a lovely christmas message we don't have to fight do we we can just be no. Yeah, we can be happy. We can just we can be, be happy. happy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I agree with that. Now, is there anything else, Dave, that you would like to promote or add? Or I just like to say, you know, if you have a chance to go to my Bandcamp site, DaveStefford.BandCamp.com, and listen to my latest album, which is called Infinity, just go and listen to it, and maybe you'll like it. I hope so. You know, I don't expect everyone in the world. It's ambient loop guitar is not to everybody's taste. But a lot of people have never got to hear it. So if you go there and listen to it, maybe you'll be surprised. Yeah. You might find that you like a new kind of music now. Well, I, I know one guy on one of these big um, uh, um, shows where they, the, the competitive shows like uh, uh, um, American Idol or oh, yeah. Australian Idol or one oh, of those, yeah. yeah. A bit sure. of this guitar loop guy got right to the top with it and it was absolutely brilliant. So I'm, it's just come back to right. me. Yeah. So I think it is out there most definitely. There's I think a lot it, of loopers out here. Yeah. yeah. You did have an, an instrument. <laughs> right. You had an instrument, I believe, in your hand at some point somewhere along the line that I've seen out there. That yeah. um, what is this, this about? Oh, what a, I can see it actually. What what is that about? Can you explain that to me? Can you can you okay. describe what you're holding and what it actually yeah, what, does? What this is, is it's an electromagnet that sits inside of a channel. I don't, you probably won't be able to see the channel. It's very shallow. And what you do is you put it on your guitar string, which I'll try to do here. The guitar is right here. Yeah. Probably can't hear that at all. And it just okay. plays the note forever. It just plays that one note forever so, and ever or until the battery in the Evo dies. See if you can give, it, it, see if you give us a demo. Give me a demo. Get your guitar. Give hey, me hold a on. Yeah. Hold on. I don't have an amplifier in here, but we can we can do it with just the guitar. I think. Okay. There's that, and I need the Evo. And I got into the Evo because of a guy called Bill Nelson who used it a lot. So instead of playing two thousand notes, I can just do this. And you can bend notes or slide. And that's just holding that device down on the actual, um, yeah. On Over the, the pickup. Over the pickup, yeah. The electromagnets inside the Evo interact with the magnets on your pickups to create infinite sustain. Ah, there it is. That's how it was invented by a guy called Greg Heat, H-E-E-T, and you can go read about it on Wikipedia, The yeah. Amazing Ebo or Ebo. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you for sharing so much of your story. And oh, I'm it, happy. Yeah, it's been great, Dave. I've really um, enjoyed listening to your, your stuff. It, it's fascinating. And oh, you've, got a, you. you've got a lot of stuff out there for people to go and chew, to, to go and listen yeah. to choose what they might like to download and for those of you yep. that yeah want something just a bit more relaxed and uh and i think we need to relax in these times don't we we really need oh you kind of do it, don't you yeah a lot coming in yeah. yeah yeah i mean even though we're stuck at home it doesn't mean to say you know we, we still need to be able to relax properly and well, uh, home because that means i have a perfect excuse to play my guitar or yeah. work on music or play the keyboard or do yeah. something fun yeah so i'm happy yeah. to be home yeah that's great that. stuff well well here's wishing you and your cat what's your cat's name <laughs> cat, my cat is called cat soon cat soon what does that come from <laughs> well it's a 
it's a Korean name that I made up. So if I call her, Katsuna, Katsuna. <laughs> yeah. I love so, cats, love animals. Yeah, I love, love my cat. She was a stray cat. She appeared this last December, 2019. And I took her in, cleaned her up, fed her, took her to the vet, put a chip in her neck so that if she gets lost, they can bring her back to me. And Excellent. she is now the cat in Great Britain. She's yeah. doing really well. Oh, fantastic. So, yeah. I think you should take care of stray animals if you can. If you can feed them at least, give them something to eat, yeah. you know, go for it. That's lovely Be of you. Nice. You're showing yeah. the character that you are, and you are a lovely man. You really are an ambient man. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's and so it's, lovely of you to say. It's been thank a you. wonderful pleasure. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to Dave Stafford, and I'm going to call him the ambient man. Dave, I'd like to thank <laughs> you for coming in, and, and, uh, and this is Dave saying goodbye to you all out there. Yep. Bye, everybody. Have fun. Take care. Be safe. Thank you, Dave. And you have been listening to Tracy's Prog World. Thank you for coming in and sharing with us and keeping the show going. Let me know anything you think. I would love to know what you think. It helps me shape the show and it helps me know who's interested. And, uh, and I will answer you back. So thank you for being here. Stay safe. Keep your chin up in these tough times. Take care till next time. Bye-bye for now. So ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. That was Dave Stafford, a very ambient man with his guitar. And um, wasn't they great stories? I mean, talk about aha moment uh, with Robert Fripp there. That was just amazing. And uh, we have to go and check Dave out and download some of his stuff. There's going to be something there for everybody. So thank you for joining. And uh, of course, you're going to join me next week with my next guest. You'll have to come on board to see who that is then. And uh, Thanks very much once again. Take care of yourselves. Look after each other. And I'll see you next week. It's over and out from Tracy's Prog World.